Thank you. Uh, well, I'm Ali, and uh, let's do this today. I'm going to teach you guys how to present your idea. Uh, is it okay? Yes. The Finnish guys, the Finnish people might know me. How many of the Finns know who I am? Okay, good. All right. And who am I? You, my friend. Who am I? Uh, you're a comedian. Yeah. And? And you're master in business. Master in Oh! You're one of the few who actually knows that I have a business degree. I learned it. That's really good. Uh, but first question, why are you guys all standing? There are so many chairs here. I know two people wanted to take chairs, but your Danish teacher said, don't! <laughs> it's okay, you guys can have chairs. Just take chairs, just take chairs and sit down. There's no reason for you to stand. So good morning to everyone. Morning. How are you guys doing today? Good. good. Uh, what are we going to do today? What is the main objective of today? What is it? Who knows? Storytelling. Good. That's pretty good. Why do you need uh, storytelling? Why? You guys are studying business and design. Why do you need to know how to tell a story? Why? You have to be able to sell an idea that you have. Great. Now, how many of you guys are actually uh, going to maybe create your own brand, label, company? How many of you guys are going to be an entrepreneur? Hands up. Good. A few. None of the Finns. <laughs> it's good. Mostly. It's okay. <laughs> and, uh, and the rest of you, what are you going to do? You didn't raise your hand, my friend. What are you going to do? Yeah, well, it's uncertain if I'm going to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> okay, so you don't know if it's going to be, if you're going to be an entrepreneur. But uh, even if, if you don't become an entrepreneur, what are you going to do? Designer. A designer. So you're going to end up working for somebody else, right? All right, so it's a, it's a good thing as well. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But here's the, you know, when people ask me, what do I do? I just say, I tell people that I'm a comedian. But in fact, I have a master's in business, and uh, I'm actually an entrepreneur. Uh, I have many businesses. I actually invest a lot. Uh, I became an entrepreneur about uh, seven years ago. Uh, just when the economy was going really bad, I used to work at a place called Trainer's House. The Finns might know the company. It's owned by Yari Saraswo. He's like the Trump of Finland. Uh, He's not like he's not that he's not that he's not an asshole, but he used to have a similar show on TV called the uh, the Apprentice, uh, the Finnish version. That's why we call him the Trump. Uh, I used to work for him, and uh, and then I realized that that's not what I want to do. I want to become a comedian. So the first thing that I ever did was I I mean the first thing that I did for that I. I just listed the things that I needed to do in order to become a comedian. In order for me to become a comedian, I had to have a basic income because I had just got married. We had a, we just had bought a house with my wife, and we had our firstborn coming on its way. So I need a basic income just to survive. So I started to think about, all right. So I'm not going to make a lot of money by comedy in the beginning. 
I have to do other things. And uh, that's how I started my own company. And right now, about seven, eight years later, uh, I'm pretty happy. I don't work that much anymore. I have enough money. I'm kind of rich. Uh, <laughs> it's good. You guys should really, really try to be rich. It's really, really it's much better than being poor. Because I've been poor most of my life, uh, and I don't like it. And by saying rich, I don't mean money. Uh, I have money, I don't have that much money. Really? Uh, but the, the amount of money that I have, uh, just keep speaking. To yes, please. So I started by asking that I lead me with it. And uh, so today, when we go through some of the things, just keep in mind that. You need to do things that make you happy. So if you want to become an entrepreneur, just, just do it. Or if you want to work for somebody else, just make sure that when you work for somebody else, it's the best job that you want to do. You know what I mean? And that's my model when I, when I go forward. But hey, uh, before we, uh, when, when, when I was planning this, I asked uh, Mika to tell you guys uh, to actually ask you guys to do a pitch uh, of your own idea, right? At three minutes. So you guys have three minutes. Uh, where is your team? Is everybody in their team right now? All right, so your team is kind of close, good. So the basic idea is that you only have, uh, what instructions did you get? What did Mika tell you to do? <coughs> Story of, about an idea. Yeah, the idea that you have. Okay, good. So it's an idea that you guys have. So it's a story, and what were the limitations of the story, apart from three minutes? Were there any other limitations? Not actually telling the idea. Not actually telling the idea. Isn't that fun? I'll just give you this. Oh, you want you want me to wear this? Oh, but yes. yeah, because we're streaming this, of course. <laughs> I broke this already. Uh, uh, okay. Let me just. So, how many of you guys have uh, have already done the assignment? How many have you done this, the, the assignment already? Have you practiced it? Has? Huh? <laughs> you haven't practiced it? What have you done? It's okay, I really didn't think that you guys were gonna practice. I've been in your position as well. <laughs> I know that nothing has really changed. Uh, all right, so uh, who still needs time to practice? Okay, uh, where's, where's your team? Where's your team? Right here. You're right here, uh, come and stand here. Good. <laughs> come and stand here. Right. Who else is in your team? I guess I'm all, all right. All right, uh, and come, come, come and all stand here. And who was supposed to present the story for the, for the thing? That was me. That was you. So you go back and sit. <laughs> and the two of you now have to have three minutes. <laughs> wait, wait, before we start this. Now, whenever you, are, you have to do a presentation, the first thing that you have to remember is how am I going to get these people's attention? How am I going to make this different from everybody else? All right? So now, you're not here because you got sick on the day that you guys have to pitch the best idea of your life. So this is the moment where you two have to step in. All right? Now, what are you going to do different to get our attention? Just do something. <laughs> Start Hello. Talking. Good. Start talking. Just a simple thing, all right? Just go back, sit down. I'll, uh, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Just sit back. <laughs> yeah, you can, yeah? Give him a round of applause. <laughs> that, was, that was uncomfortable, wasn't it? 
That was really, really uncomfortable, wasn't it? You guys had not practiced. And then the, the one person who was supposed to present the idea wasn't allowed to present it. And then you guys had to do it. All right. Now, before we start this thing, I just want to tell you guys a couple of basic things. Now, when we go through the day, the three things that I'm going to show you guys should be constant. So the basic things always have to be there when we talk about these issues. And these are the basics. You need to have an idea. Your idea doesn't have to be the best. Your idea doesn't have to be uh, solving everything. But you still need an idea. You need a team, and then you need a plan. So that's the basic three for any business pitching or idea pitching that you have. Have an idea, have a team, have a plan. OK? Do you guys have an idea? Do you guys have a team? Do you guys have a plan? You guys don't have a plan. <laughs> all right. Get yourself a plan. All right. Now, everybody has two minutes' time to get, to, uh, to get with your team and get a plan ready. Two minutes. Get a plan ready for how you're going to make this a different show than everybody else. Two minutes. Go. Uh, yeah, if you guys have, I would, yeah, I would definitely. No, just black coffee. Thank you. One minute. Thank you. <laughs> okay, go back to your places. Two minutes is over. Go back. Your two minutes is over. Go back to your own places. OK. Are you guys nervous? Don't worry. I'm not going to grade you guys up on this. You cannot fail today. This is a good thing. You cannot fail. All right, now, before we start uh, by you guys having the chance to, or you guys presenting your ideas, I just want to make sure that everybody understands the following things. You all know how to present an idea. You all know how to present uh, a story. You all know how to be funny. You all know how to transfer your feelings to another person. So don't worry about any of these things. Just remember, you are good at many things. How many of you guys you know, don't want to present an idea? How many of you guys are actually today are just going like, I don't want to do this. I really, really don't want to do this. Um, how many of you guys are afraid to present an idea? Just raise your hands. It's OK. Good. We got a few people. All right. Today is a safe space for you guys. All right. We are not going to judge you on how how bad you present your idea, all right? <laughs> so you can be as bad as you can. 
just be as bad as you can, all right? The only thing I'm asking you guys to do is to do your presentation different from the previous group. Just do it a bit different. Now, there are several tools for that. One of them is, if I present my stuff here, you guys can present your stuff there. If I, you know, if I'm talking, you guys can sing. Just make sure that it's a bit different. It doesn't have to be all that different, just a little bit. Is this clear? Good. Do you guys have a plan? Good, good. Do you guys have a plan? <laughs> All right. So who wants to start? Who wants to start? You guys can go. Great. What is your, uh, what is your group name? C-Nerds. What? C-Nerds. C-Nerds. Comes from C-Nerds, C-Nerds. Oh, OK. Well, give a round of applause for, for them. <laughs> yeah? C-Nerds. <laughs> good. So your three minutes starts now. Okay, so everyone, please close your eyes for a moment. Imagine yourself that you are uh, somewhere in a park or with your family, and then suddenly you receive a, an email or a call telling you that you will be hired. <laughs> <laughs> so this, that's a strong uh, uh, statement, this is a message you can receive. So how, how do you think about how difficult is to write this story? How it will be uh, actually the challenge to be a pilot, or even more a single pilot, even of any writer. So th those questions are something that uh, in Finland are quite quite oftenly uh, some people ask to themselves because they only have uh, their their experience and they don't have something that can actually help them to write such children. Obviously, their parents or friends, but th there is no one that tells you that. And well, imagine that we have this family case, for example, Jack and Anuka, or single, and they have children to write, two of them. Yes, and if we continue the story, uh, what happens with Jaakko and Anuka, that unfortunately, Jaakko gets too frustrated with their kid who has special needs. Uh, their child, Jonas, has, an, has ADHD. He is not able to concentrate on almost anything, and he's really struggling, and that's why Jaakko decides to leave, and Annuka becomes a single mom. Uh, recently, she has received an invitation by City of Helsinki to join this platform where she can um, try to seek for further information about how to raise uh, Jonas, even on her own. Uh, first, she is a bit hesitant, but when she digs deeper into the application, she actually notices that there is this channel uh, with other parents who have childs with ADHD, and suddenly she gets multiple emails uh, from these people who are inviting her to join for a common meal where she can go and share, the, uh, share her uh, issues, and she actually gets support like she hasn't received before because she tried to also write something on Bawa uh, and it wasn't <laughs> working at all. Uh, the answers were terrible, but now she actually has a safe space where we can share, she can share uh, her experiences, and she also gets support. Uh, before she and uh, Jonas are going to bed, uh, they open the website and they play a little games. Uh, Jonas gets new ideas on how he can tell about what kind of struggles he is having, and he's telling about them to other kids at school, and kids actually start to understand him better. So he's developing also his emotional and social skills. And eventually, Jonas is not anymore a special needs child, a special need child, but he's actually just a special child. Very good. Well. Before you go, before you go. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, very good. Now, uh, the, the, the thing is that how many of you guys know what their solution is? Okay. Now, uh, okay. Based on the story, how many people can guess what the solution is? Very well. Huh? Yeah? So, uh, would you like to say what their solution is? What did you, 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 uh, in, 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 yeah, yeah. So there's a, it's a platform for single parents and their parents to um, share their advices for one another and for, especially for parents with, with special needs kids. Is that correct? Partly. 
Yes. Very good. That's all we needed. Thank you so much. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so who's the next team? <laughs> next team. <laughs> Was it bad? Was it really, really horrible standing here? No? Good. All right. So, so next team, uh, you guys stood here, and you guys did it in a pair. The, so, so, you're, so you guys are the next team. And what's your, what is your team name? 10 out of 10? Please. <laughs> Please, come in front and. Talk to the microphone. It's OK. Just, just pass it around. <laughs> All right, are you guys ready? So your three minutes starts now. My dear husband, I have surprised. Tell me. I'm pregnant. We are pregnant. <laughs> oh, do you know which one it is? It's a girl. Is it really? I the fear to not taste the whole world. Pink. She's Very pink. pink. We are princess. We're really princess. Let's start painting. Yep. Come in. Do some body things or something different? Have you thought about that? No, not every girl likes it. No, not every girl. The, probably she will like, I don't know, play football or anything. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's an option. Yeah, it probably could be. I think that you are probably in boxing your girl and being some something that you think is the best thing for she, but probably not. So you should. Google this. Yes, let's 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 Google. Nothing here. Boys are. Boys. It doesn't say anything. Yeah, boys are boys and girls are girls. <coughs> okay. But we have the Neuvola meeting coming up. Should we go there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock. Hello. Welcome to my Neuvola place. <laughs> How can I help you today? We have questions about girls and boys. What do you mean, girls and boys? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can, like, we had a friend who came to us and said that we shouldn't be bringing up the girl like a girl. So, uh, Interesting statement. When you think about that, what does that really mean? I think it's really important that you've brought up this subject because a lot of parents are not aware of the fact that when they have a girl or a boy, before the baby is even born, they box it into a certain box of what it should be. So here I have some uh, material for you that you can look into and the link to the website where you can find a lot of information on how to make sure that you bring up your kid as their genuine self. And don't worry, when your child is four, uh, 18 months old, four years old, and six years old, we'll make sure that we'll make sure that your kid is mentally healthy and also we'll make checkups, not just in regards to the girl, uh, child's physical being, but also how they're doing themselves and with their self-identity and confidence. So we'll make sure we'll take care of that side. <laughs> Was that it? Yeah. Very well. <laughs> All right. So again, from the story, what is the? Uh, I I don't know the correct answer either. So from the story, what is the what is the actual solution that they are trying to provide? Anyone? Oh, it's very close. Yeah. Very close. Yeah. So what was your idea originally? Our idea is the difficult thing is we're working with Neobola, which a lot of foreign people don't know what it is. It's the welfare maternity clinic that is offered to 99% of all women or people who are having children or families that are having children. And I said 99% actually use it. So our idea is to uh, make the whole genuine me, it's called the genuine me program, uh, to actually make that a part of the Neobola system and the Neobola services. So they don't only concentrate on the physical benefits of the child, but actually also the mental self-confidence that each other. Yeah. So this is a very gender, gender neutral way Actually of... Actually, our, yeah. um, mm -hmm. our subject is gender equality. Gender Thank equality, you. okay. Yeah. Well, that's very good. Give a round of applause to 10 out of 10. That was really good.
and very different. It, it was actually a play. Very good. And uh, yeah, that was good. So uh, next team, who is next? Okay, you guys. You guys have time. You guys haven't planned anything. <laughs> you guys have time. So you're gonna come alone? Okay. Here's a microphone as well. It's okay. You guys can be last, so you have time to. <laughs> there you go. Yep. And what is your team? Icebreakers, all right. And uh, are you ready? So your three minutes starts now. Okay. Um. So guys, imagine holding a cup. The freshly brewed coffee inside is so hot that you can clearly see the steam emerging until the comforting smell reaches your nose. With the mug cupped in both hands, the warmth of the cup has spread even to your fingertips and it's radiating to every corner of your body. You're warm and comfortable. With this image in mind, it is easy to imagine yourself enjoying a good conversation, isn't it? Turns out, even science agrees, holding hot drinks make us more approachable and open to connect with people. Coffee is a language in itself, as many of us experience every day in coffee dates with friends or the habitual coffee break with our colleagues. Imagine your life without these small moments of warmth. It's a poem of poverty that strips you of the basic human needs of connection a place to go and an ultimately sense of belonging. We want to get coffee back to, uh, we want to get people back to coffee breaks with their colleagues. We want to offer a relaxed networking opportunity to long-term unemployed people. We utilize the comfortable setting of a coffee meeting, including complimentary coffee. Was that it? Great. <laughs> Okay, so uh, who wants to get, uh, and uh, what is the general idea or the solution here? Anyone? Yep. Platform where people can go have coffee and meet new people and be social. Yeah, basically, yes. And what, what was your original task? Well, the uh, original idea is it's for long-term unemployed, and they are supposed to, it's like a matchmaking platform for people who are unemployed and companies who are looking for employees. Okay. And it's all, it all happens over a cup of coffee, so it's not like an actual job fair where you go in a suit and bring your CV, but you can just go there as you are to find a new job. Well, very, uh, to be honest, I didn't, I didn't get it from, from the yeah. story. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> that you but, did not get it, but yeah. But it was, a, uh, I think that uh, overall, it was a very good presentation of uh, just bringing out the, the idea of having a coffee with people you don't know. That was very good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. You can just leave it there. I'll go. There. So, uh, and next, next. All right. Now, before you guys come, uh, what is your team name? Uh, the, 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 the front row. I, I thought you guys all were together. Okay, the front row. Uh, the, this, you, you, you three. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you are team. Okay, this is really, really <laughs> weird because you guys all went like this, and I thought that you were our team. Okay, well, you two. Okay. Uh, yeah. Phoenix. Phoenix. Is our name. Phoenix is your name. Okay. Now, uh, how many of the things that you have already seen was in your original presentation? <coughs> None. None. Good. Please. <laughs> so, Phoenix. <laughs> and talk to the microphone very close because otherwise people. Where the slush people will not hear us. No. Yeah, yeah. The slush yeah. team will not hear us. And, uh, the yeah. The slush team will not hear us and they will get upset <laughs> and okay. they will cry. No. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I would like to introduce Jonas. Uh, he's a hard worker and he's working in a big marketing company in Helsinki. He has a couple child and I think he life is really stressful. So it was regular Monday morning and he was waiting the tram for the work and suddenly the happiness tram came. And he was like, oh, what is this? Maybe I should go inside. 
And then he was realized that it looks like a nature. There was a lot of plants, like hanging plants and nice chairs and <laughs> meditation music. And he was taking a little bit nap and like waiting to um, relax during the commute. And after the tram, he was super relaxed and ready to work. Was that it, or is it? Oh, it's, it will continue. Good. <laughs> OK. And here we have Lisa. Lisa is an exchange student in Helsinki. And Lisa finds it somehow really difficult to talk to Finnish people. I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> and um, one day, Lisa is at a tram stop and sees the happiness tram to come into the tram stop. He steps into the tram and sees a lot of people in the tram playing some kind of games. Lisa joins in and starts to play, with, play the games with the people Lisa doesn't know. Lisa feels happy. Lisa makes a few friends. <laughs> and now Lisa feels comfortable to be in Finland, even though not every tram is a happiness tram. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wait, 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 Felix. <laughs> so, uh, what is the solution here? <laughs> happiness tram. Okay, happiness tram is the solution. But what is the, what, what 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 are they trying to s uh, solve? <laughs> now you have to think about yourself as people who m might actually invest in an idea like this. Would you guys invest in a happiness tram? Okay. <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah. It's, there is no wrong, right or wrong answer. People have actually invested in my ideas as well. So, uh, yeah. I'm thinking there's a kind of like team of also doing happiness and, and uh, uh, together. Like a pet together. Like a company that co-works with you. And then maybe like a one third of the week also a benefit side. Yeah. And what is your solution? And what is your idea? Uh, it's uh, basically a tram that has two cards. The other one is for relaxation and another one is for uh, socializing. So we are uh, solving two problems which infect happiness, loneliness, and stress. Okay, very good. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sorry, so much. Okay, this is really good. This is really, really good. Are you guys having fun? Are you guys, how many, how many of you guys are excited now? How many of you, good. Are you guys excited? That's really, really good. It's not that, it's not really, to be honest, it's re I didn't accept, I didn't expect such good uh, presentations. I pretty much thought that you guys are going to stand here and go, where our idea is this, and just talk as robots, which is really good that you guys are human. <laughs> And you guys are here. Some people have made mistakes on stage, and they have just gone forward with it. So next team, who's up for next? You guys, all right? <laughs> what is your team name? Choo Choo. Choo Choo, all right. Uh, Choo Choo the train, OK, good. Uh, so Choo Choo the train. Uh, are you guys ready? Yep. So your three minutes starts now. John never thought it would come to this. But terrible things were happening in, in his country, and now he was fearing for his life. He decides to leave everything he has ever known behind, not knowing where he's heading or if he would ever return. After a long and dangerous journey, uh, he arrives at the border control booth where he tells a sleepy clerk that he wants to file for asylum. They let him pass. Relief. He is now in Finland, the safest country in the world. Perhaps he can build a new life here. He takes, he's taken into a reception center. So much paperwork, and it's hard to read in English. His roommate shows him the ropes, and they, go, they take the bus to buy some groceries together. <coughs> On the way there, a drunk man <laughs> yells at them to go home, and the shopkeeper gets mad at him because he didn't know he needs to pay for his plastic bags. <laughs> the sun has already risen, and it has just risen, and it's already beginning to set. It's cold despair. He returns to the reception center, 
He looks th back through the bag of papers they gave him and notices a box, a gift from Pekka. Pekka? Pekka is a 27-year-old <laughs> teacher from Helsinki. He sighs as he reads yet another article about vandalism in reception centers. He wonders why Finns only talk to strangers when they have something bad to say. He hates it when people leave angry notes in the hallway of his building. Why are the angry people always the most vocal ones too? He wishes he could say something nice out loud. How silly would that be? He remembered a post he saw on Facebook. His friend had shared a website where you can send uh, welcome notes to immigrants. He goes back and checks it out. Hey, you can also sponsor a pair of socks. Cool. X, John writes a thank you letter to Pekka. They probably never meet, but for a brief moment, they connect and plant the seeds toward a more multiculturally open Finland. Very nice. <laughs> so, uh, Chuchu, uh, who, who would like to guess what is their solution? Or who knows what's the solution? Or what is the idea that they have, please? A gift pack for refugees, and what is your original idea? Uh, pretty much that, with a personalized note. Okay, a gift pack with a personalized note. Very, very well presented. Good. Thank you. So, who's next? You guys, yes. just come. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And what is uh, the name of your group? Diving Crested Monkeys. Uh, the, the what? Diving Crested Monkeys. Diving Crest of the Monkeys. Yes. Okay. Well, good. I'm I'm looking excited. I'm looking forward to this one. <laughs> so welcome. We are going to tell you a story today, and the story starts in a supermarket where a child is with his dad going grocery shopping. minutes later in the supermarket. Other than, for example, fair trade or price. Or price. <laughs> that was it. Thank you. So, who would like to uh, answer what was their solution? <laughs> yep, go ahead.
So what we wanted to highlight was the uh, overplayed explanation of what Cafred really not is, um, was that a lot of labels and the confusion that there is, they don't really explain what makes the product better and people just assume that there are certain metrics behind it. And the second thing is the values we give or society gives for to choose for a certain product, mostly t price. Uh, the other point is value. On most of the time it's a, just a label. We want to create a product or create a system that gives actual metrics to the person so they know what to uh, why they decide for a certain product instead of just a sticker. Yeah. Potential SDG, sustainable development goal label. Well, thank you. That was very good. Thank you. OK, so uh, how many teams do we still have who hasn't performed? Just a few. Good. Uh, well, you guys should come now. Okay. Would you guys like to perform now? Here. Uh, yeah, just come. It's OK. Whatever. Come. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> what is your group name? It's uh, GPP. GPP. All right. GPP, you, are you guys ready? Your three minutes starts now. Well, so we will tell you our own lyrics. Talk to the microphone if it's possible. Yes. Yeah. Hello? Okay. So um, when we started working with uh, gender equalities, we, we found it really hard to, to discuss and, and define uh, gender equality in, in Nordic countries and also like the root causes. Because when you look at the SDGs definition in the ethnic goals, it's mostly about child marriages and things that are really, um, really different uh, from our <coughs> everyday life. But uh, I think that most people will still uh, agree that gender equality is real in Nordic countries, even though that maybe uh, there's laws that prohibit it, that makes it legal, uh, and statistics show. But statistics shows that it is, uh, it is there. So we, we found, we, we figured maybe there's another thing uh, that's the problem. Well, as Andreas was talking about, you know, like us Nordic countries, we don't have gender equality or inequality, do we? Like the laws don't say that we have them. So why do we still have them? Well, we're gonna try to tell you a little analogy of how we see it. So imagine Andreas, he's uh, a normal Danish boy. You don't have to look at me, look at this <laughs> wonderful <laughs> man. Um, he's enjoying life in the trees. He's basking in the glorious sun. Yes, because the sun, just to make it really clear, <laughs> it's that and the sun is also uh, gender equality. We're all equal and he's enjoying the benefits of all that, however, we live in the Nordic countries. We all know we do not have sun that often. <laughs> it's quite cloudy. Um, if we could make it a little cloudy, we can't. I can't control the lights. But use your imagination. This cloud is a yeah a metaphor, like a physical metaphor, of what is you know inhibiting us from actually experiencing true gender equality. So how can we get rid of this cloud? That is what we want to try to fix. Because this cloud are all of the invisible structures that are in our society and that we help perpetuate every single day through our actions. And yeah, that's what we hope to deal with. Okay. Good. So uh, can anyone guess what the solution is? Does anybody have an answer for the solution? I think uh, we probably, we, I think we all can, can agree that we know what the problem is. But how many people actually know what the solution is here? How many? All right. So what is your solution? We want to do an interactive role play simulation to highlight the, the small discriminations and privileges that exist in our society and yes, continue to create inequality for people and not just uh, the binary terms of gender. Yeah. Okay. So you need it, it's 
ought to have like emotional engagement instead of just being told some statistics and some data. Yeah, it's it's important to uh, to experience it and to yeah. get emotionally engaged and feel the empathy instead All of right. just uh, yeah. So okay. that's the purpose of the simulation. Okay. Uh, well, to be honest, I, I I understand the problem, but the solution wasn't really there. What you guys were trying to say. But uh, I kind of like the fact that you're a normal Danish boy. <laughs> I think that was really. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've only been to Aarhus. I don't know. Uh, so I've, I've met a few Danish people in Aarhus. But, uh, but yeah, so good. good. Normal Danish people. <laughs> that was really good. Um, so uh, who's next? Who is next? You guys? Yeah, just come. Come. Yeah. You guys are last, I'm sorry. <laughs> so your thing better be the best, because <laughs> you have so much time. <laughs> what is your team name? Fantastic Five. Fantastic Five. <clears throat> are you guys ready, Fantastic Five? Yes. So uh, your three minutes starts now. All right, so welcome today. Um, and here we have one uh, Finnish elderly lady living in Helsinki, and over there we have an international student, and they're gonna tell us quickly about themselves. Hello, everybody. <laughs> My name is Lena, and I'm 85 years old. I, I'm trying to get to the library today. I haven't seen my friends in, in so many years. I mean, so many months. <laughs> I only see this grandpa next to me, but I'm going to the library today. All right, thank you. Now a story from an international student. Uh, so now is a story of an international student today. I hope I woke up today, I thought it's just a normal Monday, but suddenly I saw there are so many greetings in my telephone. I suddenly found out today is the Mid-Autumn Festival in China. And it's the third year I come here and I haven't seen my parents and my grandparents for two years. Uh, I don't want to go to the bar or go to a celebration event. I only want to chat to my parents face to face. Or when I meet some obstacles, I want to have a wiser people, a wi elder people to give me some advice. All right. Thank you. Um, so now we kind of need your help because um, we need a couple of ideas from you how to help these people. So just think of anything, how to help these people, and one or two ideas will be enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mika. <laughs> you set up a date between the two. <laughs> All right, nice. Any other ideas? Yes. <laughs> she, <laughs> she can Skype her parents. <laughs> now, thank you. Um, so imagine that um, all of us can work together uh, to help more people like this in the city of Helsinki. And together with that, um, like, uh, make them meet each other and also make use of the public spaces in the city more often. And with that, we kind of can um, use our collaborative imagination. Yep. Thank you. Uh, I think it's pretty clear what the what the original idea is and the solution because you asked the solution from us, <laughs> which was kind of lazy, but it it works. <laughs> It works. I wouldn't do that if I was uh, supposed to meet some investors. I would not do that. Please give me your money and the solution to our problem. <laughs> Doesn't work. But otherwise, very good. Uh, the narrative uh, work. I, yeah, very good. Thank you, guys. So next team. Next team. Uh, did you guys uh, just come? Come forward. And then uh, how many teams do we still have left? One, two, three, four. Uh, just a few. Five. All right. Six. Oh, there's still so many. <laughs> what, is the, what is your team name? Our team name is High Five. High Five. And uh, are you ready, High Five? Huh? He's alone. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm Kurt alone, so that's 
Well, that's it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So high five. Are you ready? Yeah. Three minutes starts now. So uh, I mean, we have heard a lot of funny stories here, but I will tell you a true story about a guy I met. His name is Farid. He came to Finland as a 14-year-old from Morocco. Uh, he felt that he was a, a little bit of an outsider when he came here. Yeah, he went to school. He got a few friends. But still, he doesn't ha had that much in common with the other people living here. They live in the eastern part of, of Helsinki. And I mean, it was quite a hard time for him. But he had a huge passion. He had a huge passion for football. But he had one problem. He couldn't find a team. I mean, he had a few friends, but they, did, they didn't have a passion for football. So he started to think, how can he find people to have with the same passion that he has? He, st he started to think about, why is there not a community that would connect these kind of people with the same interest that he has? For example, if there would be an, a tournament, a football tournament, where everybody would be welcome. And he thought, yeah, but I don't have a team. How could I join the tournament? But then he realized that how if you put a little twist on it, so you can apply as an individual, <coughs> that you wouldn't need a team. You will get, get one team when you come there. There would, everybody would play with each other, despite their background, despite their, <coughs> from which country they come. Also in that way, he could meet new people, interact with them, and get a social network. So, Parid thought, thought of this idea and thought, I think there's a lot of people out there that also wants to uh, do the same thing that he wants to. But he couldn't, uh, he couldn't find anything. So, why isn't there this kind of type of, of community? Okay, back to the story of, of Farid. And this guy actually exists. He luckily came to my team, so he got his team. And he was brilliant on football. But there is not a community like there, uh, that out there. So why shouldn't we make one? Thank you. Very good. That was a very traditional pitch. Yeah. That was very, uh, I could see that in slush. <laughs> good, good. That was very traditional. Yeah. Uh, is, everybody, is it clear what the, what the problem and the solution is to everyone? Or do we need to elaborate on it? Thank you. Thank you, high five. Thanks. All right, uh, let's go through all the teams, and then we're going to have a quick break. Uh, and then after that, uh, we'll, we'll continue with a couple of other things. And um, yeah, so next team, just come forward. Just, just come. Come on here. I like the fact that you guys want everybody, wanted everyone to open that space, but now you're the only one clogging it. I, I, I really like it. <laughs> what is your team? Eleven. Uh, Eleven? Yes. All right, eleven. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, I'd like to start off by asking two questions. Uh, who owns a st uh, smartphone in the audience? Okay, pretty much everyone. And um, who's actually from Helsinki, born and bred? Okay, notably less. So this is going to be a semi-personal story. So I'm not from Helsinki, I'm actually from Oulu. Don't know if you know the city, it's quite small up in the north. Um, when I moved here, I knew two people, my cousin, was the other one, and then there was my old high school friend. That's okay, that's more than some people have. Some people are totally new. And uh, I was really, really excited. Like so many opportunities, museums to go, movies to see, uh, places to go, bars to hang out in. And uh, luckily I had the two friends. I could do stuff with them, but of course they had their own lives. They had work and studies and so I was left out quite a, quite a lot of time. So uh, there's this one um, art show in Kiasma, and I'd really like to see it. And I don't really feel like going there alone. So I guess I'm gonna skip that. Oh, I got a message. 
Uh, it's uh, Ona saying that she would really like to go to the art show with me. So I signed up, uh, I was pretty bored, to this app where you could meet new people. And um, yeah, I guess I got a third friend over here. Yep, thanks. Yeah, good. Oh, before you go, before you go, uh, what is the, what is the uh, problem or the solution? Yeah, you can go ahead. Loneliness in Helsinki. Loneliness in Helsinki. All right. And, and that is that, was that the original problem? Uh, like connecting people who are not from here with people who are from here, or who lived here for a longer time. Okay. Like a net network pl uh, platform. So it's like a cultural Tinder. Uh, in a way, yes. Cultural Tinder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, next team. Who is next? Who is next? You guys are next? Yeah. Come on, just just come. What is your team name? Gumboots. Uh, Gumboots. Gumboots. All right, there you go. <laughs> Gumboots. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, your three minutes starts now. Yes. So let me tell you a little story of my life. I wake up in the morning, get up, look into my closet, and see only broken jeans. I didn't have money to buy a new pair last month, and now I'm struggling while thinking about what to wear. Well, I pull on a pair that is not too bad, eat porridge for breakfast, while thinking about what groceries to buy today. More porridge, more, maybe some bread, cheese is a bit too expensive, maybe there are discounts somewhere, milk, are there any seasonal vegetables available that wouldn't be too expensive, I think. I walk out the door, take my bike, although it is raining. I cannot afford public transport this month because I had an urgent visit to the dentist. I ride my bike to the campus, go to class, and sit down for a couple of hours. I go for a lunch, 260, and the food is rather okay. I think, kind of the same every day. I'm in a hurry, have to go to work. I take my bike again, ride for a couple of kilometers, and in the middle I remember that I have one bill unpaid waiting for me at home. Frustration, frustration takes me over. I stop, write it down to remember, and continue the ride. During the evenings, I work as an assistant to an older woman who cannot manage her life on herself. Every day, every day I work for hours because I have to. The rents in Helsinki are high. I couldn't afford to live in the city. Not in the city center, of course, but even further away without working. My pay is low, I know, but I manage. I often think about the future and the potential to working in a better paid job. I cycle back home. It's still raining. I'm soaked wet. Groceries, I have to go to the store. Which one is the cheapest nearby? There are Little and Alepa. Maybe Alepa, there are some nice discounts. I go to the store, look for the products I need, pay and go back home. I spend an hour thinking about all the things I would need, all the things I would need to buy, the costs, euros, 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 all going out from the bank account, only Little coming in. Luckily, tomorrow is the day Kela pays the subsidies. I hope that I wouldn't have to do all this thinking by myself, that I would have time for something else as well. Seeing friends, going out. What if all the planning was automized? Thank you. All right. Thank you. So who would like to guess what is the solution or the problem or the idea? Anyone? Yep. Huh? Expense planner, is that correct? Kind of. Like what, what is your original idea? Uh, so the issue is poverty, especially like people who, are, who work but are still poor. And the solution is like an expense planner, but it's integrated to, for example, bank accounts, so you can see everything, and also like Gela, uh, the, the, like the uh, institution in Finland who pays subsidize for, for poor people as well so that it will see like what kind of applications they will like what to apply for and um, what else do we have um, also like some kind of rewarding system so that like if you manage to save some money you could get some rewards for it for example going going to buy a new pair of jeans from somewhere or something 
Okay, well, good. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, next team. Yep. Oh, but it's okay. We, we, whichever. All right. <laughs> there you go. And what is your team name? Uh, team Nine Feeling Fine. Team Nine Feeling Fine. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so, um, okay. Are you guys, whenever you're ready? Are you ready? Yeah. All right, your three minutes starts now. So our story is about this little girl. She's called Mia. She's turning seven in about a couple weeks' time. She, is, she has a couple friends at school, but she finds it really difficult to integrate and make friends. She's a shy person, and she usually spends most of her time at home just helping around the house. Mia's family consists of her and her single mother, who has to work uh, in two jobs to get enough money for the rent and living. One day, Mia goes to her mom and asks if she's going to have a birthday party, because her birthday is coming closer all the time. Her mom tells her that they can't afford to have a birthday party because she works too much. Um, but then her mom is going to the guidance counselor to have their parent-teacher conference at school. And the guidance counselor gives her a flyer and says, oh, look, there's um, a party for kids who um, feel socially excluded or can't, um, if you can't afford to have a birthday party for your daughter. So Mia, um, so Mia's birthday is coming up, and her mom doesn't really say anything about this. So um, she makes her the surprise, and then she takes her to this birthday party on the day. Um, at the birthday party, there are so many kids, so many um, things happening. There is food, cake, drinks, and loads of loads of new friends that she can um, meet. Yeah, the company is supported by local bakeries, restaurants, and grocery stores that offer food and a little present for every birthday uh, boy and girl. After the birthday, Mia feels very empowered, and she's happy that there is this kind of event. <laughs> very good. <laughs> So uh, I think it's very good that we finally know who makes those online videos. <laughs> <laughs> very good that you actually exist. Uh, hey, um, I think the idea is quite, uh, quite clear. Uh, would you like to elaborate what the idea was? Sure. Um, a birthday for kids who, don't have, who come from families that can't afford. Uh, can't afford, uh, OK. <laughs> was that, that was basically the idea, right? All right, thank you guys or so kids much. Who yeah. Feel, like, socially excluded. Or for kids who feel socially excluded. Uh, very, very good. All right, thank you guys. So uh, next team, you guys are up soon. I think uh, you guys, and then it's, it's you, and then it's you, the three of you. Well, I'm looking forward for this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what is your team name? Uh, smoothies. Smoothies. All right, good. Go. Uh, what does the C, the coffee cup, and the Kardashians have in common? Uh, what does the C, the coffee cup, and the Kardashians have in common? They're all fat kids. Oh, shit. I didn't <laughs> think anyone would answer me, but yeah. <laughs> so today we're faced with plastic everywhere, from the media to the food to the coffee that we drink today. And we're, we wanted to put an end to that. What if convenience didn't come at a cost to the environment? What if making the easy choice was also making the right choice? What if that Sunday hangover takeaway pizza didn't mean a truckload of waste? What if the coffee cups that we see here today didn't end up in a landfill? We want to change that. We see that today Helsinki is not the produ producer, but rather the consumer of many unwanted and many wasted products. What if what we consider as waste today was simply a fuel for the economy tomorrow? We want to build an ecosystem that changes how we think about waste. What if the bottle that you use today could be used by someone else tomorrow? What if the lunch takeaway box that you took from Fafas today could end up at Kotipizza tomorrow? I think the idea is quite clear now, but the point is that 
We want to change not how we use the things, but what we think about those things as well. We want to change not only the product itself, but the psychology behind those products. We want to create an ecosystem that's sustainable, but at the same time convenient. It's not, it's not impossible, but it's difficult. And for that, we need to change how people think, but also how to cha change people how they do things. We want to create in Helsinki the system where we empower designers to think differently, use newer materials, use more environmentally sustainable materials to create something that's very different, that's something very Finnish, that's something very Helsinki. Thank you. Thank you. That was very uh, traditional pitching as well, which is not a bad thing. Uh, do you guys want? Uh, do you guys have any questions about the idea or the solution? Or is it quite? Did Did you understand everything? Good. Like, what is the practical solution? I got the idea. Of it. Okay, so you got the idea of it. So what is the practical solution? Very good question. What is the practical solution? So we want to get rid of single-use plastic boxes and cups and replace them by reusable ones, similar to a Fante system, but for takeaway boxes, for example. Very good. Thank you. All right. Are you guys, uh, is it, uh, you guys are the last ones. Anyone else? No? So you guys are the last ones. <laughs> Good. <All right>. So <laughs> we're going to need uh, at least three rows all facing the same direction. Just, uh, no, not three rows, just three lines all facing the same direction. So if all you can, can make like a line of chairs, like a train, make a train of chairs. All right. And then the rest of you can make like an oval around here, make like, a, like an open circle. All right, it's Monday morning. Jakob and Emilia, newlyweds, uh, prepare to go for their, to their daily job at a bank. Jakob, a senior manager at the bank, has been working on the field for two years. Emilia, just a normal banker, sitting at, in front of the, just all the customers, just doing basic stuff, has been working there for 10 years. So they go up to the metro to start their commute, and they're waiting for the metro, like five minutes or whatever. So I look down at the floor and I see, ooh, mind the gap. Oh, okay, this is came come from London, whatever, it's the same thing. Okay, we have to see the mind the gap. Jakob moves his foot, he's stepping on something. No, over behind you. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> and there's there's a hashtag, gapless Helsinki. So he starts to think, what is this? What does this mean? The metro comes in, they go sit down. They're sitting there, there's a the screen on the metro, it says, oh, mind the gap, but we're not waiting for the metro. It says, gap plus Helsinki. Oh, what does this mean? We have no idea. So they get off the metro. It didn't move, but they're in the, they're in the destination, they realized. They go to work. They bo both go to different rooms. All right, good. <laughs> this is all improvised, by the way. Um, Don't say it. Oh, God. Well, you know, why not? So. Jakob thinks, okay, what, what does that mean? What was gapless Helsinki? We have no idea. And starts thinking that as well. So they look up on social media. Hey, one looks on Twitter, one looks on Facebook. And they look up gapless Helsinki. Hmm. There's a lot of discussion here about gender inequalities in the workplace. Wow, okay, so it's, there's a lot of stories being told about different kinds of things that have happened in Helsinki. But we thought Helsinki was just a totally equal, all genders included, all, everyone's being all happy and dandy, but no. There are these small little things that everyone has to face day to day. So they meet up again after work, it's five o'clock, they wanna go for a beer to discuss what they had in mind all throughout the day. <laughs> all throughout the day. They go back to the metro, they see the same sign, and they start discussing about the different things. 
that they've talked about today with their colleagues about gender inequalities in Helsinki. Thank you. Thank you. I can have that, yep. <laughs> All, All right. right, so uh, who wants to, uh, what's the original idea what, or, or the solution? Would you like to elaborate? What is the, what is the idea or the solution? So they want to bring gender inequality as, a, as a, so, like a social topic that everyone discusses, so it's using marketing as a means to bring it out to the general public. Was that the idea? He's got it. He's got, He's got okay. All right, so you guys really didn't. <laughs> Good. Good. Just <laughs> Okay, uh, just sit where you are right now. Um, now, how many of you guys felt uncomfortable presenting these ideas today? Good, okay, a few. How many, fel how many of you felt uncomfortable for other people presenting their idea? A few? Very good. It's, it's actually quite normal to have these feelings. Now, uh, here's the thing. Um, I really liked all of you guys. All of you guys did an excellent job. Why? Because it's that simple. <laughs> Seriously, it's nothing more. Now, uh, when, I, when me and Miko were planning this, I, I wanted you guys to do this just so that you know this is, this is real life. This is how actually pitching happens. Have you guys ever pitched an idea to an investor? This is how it actually happens. They give you like maybe three minutes and then you, have, you walk in and then you have three minutes or four minutes, five minutes, sometimes not even that. Sometimes you have to chase an investor down the hall and just go like, sir, I have an idea. Uh, my story, true story, uh, when I started uh, my first business, um, I actually sat, I was in, a, in, in Yumbo. Some of you guys know Yumbo. It's a, it's a big uh, shopping center just close to the airport. And I literally didn't have any money. I had 60 euros in my bank account, and uh, in my company bank account. And I only had a few hundred euros to live off for the, for the rest of the month. So I sat down in City Market. I looked into my calendar, and I realized that within the next six months, I have to find some, some way to provide a living for my family. Because my wife had just given birth, and our child was there, so, so we, it was a really, really bad situation to be in. And when I sat down in City Market, I had a cup of coffee, and then I realized that these people are taking away, and they're throwing away fruit that, is, that I can use. I was going like, please don't throw that away. A banana that, is, that has a black dot on it should not be thrown away. So I... From that moment, I was just like, can I, how much money I would make by turning that fruit into different type of juices, different type of uh, fruit salads or smoothies, and uh, how much money I would make. And then I started to count during that day, they threw, like during the 15, 20 minutes I was there, they threw away like tons and tons of these like perfectly good fruit. So what I did, I told the manager, I said, who is your boss? And he said, there's a guy called Matti Himbari. I was just like, where is he? He owns the store. And I said, where is he? He says, he's upstairs. I was like, can I meet him? And he was just like, are you crazy? <laughs> why, why would you like to meet him? I was just like, I have an idea. I just came up with it. And this is a true story. I walked into Matti Himbari's office the next day. I got, an, uh, I got like an appointment. And Matti told me to sit down, and he told me, you got five minutes to tell me what your idea is. And this is what, exactly what I did. I just told him, give me all your fruit that you're going to throw away, and I will make money. And I will split that money with you. And you know what he said? He said, all right, well, if I give you the fruit, how are you going to make money of it? And I said, I'm going to make money by adding water into it. <laughs> and he said, what? I said, yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add w water into that, and I'm going to make that into juices, into different smoothies, and then we're going to sell it. And you get your share. And he said, all right, you got exactly one month to prove to me that your concept works. I had no idea that I had a concept. I came out with the word water right at that spot. I didn't know anything else. I have never made a single smoothie in my life. 
I had never made a juice in my life. I just was, I was so much in a panic state that I needed to come up with an idea. So he told me, that's your place where you can work. Bring your uh, equipment and you have a month time to prove to me that your concept actually works. The next day I went to uh, Giganti and I bought a smoothie, like a, like a blender, and the blender was 69 euros. And I, I think I had like 80 euros in my bank account. In my, so I bought the blender for 69 euros because I never thought that I would actually make it. I took the blender to City Market and the, because it's a really, really big store and the area where I was working at is actually a professional restaurant. And, this, uh, and, the, head, uh, and the head chef came over and saw my blender and he said, are you going to work with that? And I was just like, yeah. And he was just like, I don't think it's going to work. I was just like, I just had, this, this is all the money I have. The first day, we sold eight smoothies. The next day, we sold 17. The third day, we sold during the first hour, we sold 150. And I had to quit because the machine broke down. It just totally broke down. So I went to Giganti and I told the, the, the person, I was just like, I don't know what happened to this. <laughs> But can you give me a new one? And then he just gave me a new one. And I was just like, can I have the, 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 the what's it called? The, the jug. Because the jug was, because I only had one jug. I was like, can I have the jug? And he was just like, yeah, just keep the, keep the jug, because this one doesn't work. So I went there the next day. We sold again during the first hour, over 200. And again, the machine broke. So I went back to Giganti, and I said, this one broke as well. <laughs> And the person was just like, w why? I was just like, I don't know. This is, why do you sell me this piece of shit? And then he gave me, and I was like, can I keep the jug? And he was just like, keep the jug. So I have three jugs now, one blender. I come, and the next day, uh, we sold again 250, 300, uh, 300 of, of the smoothies. And then again, the machine broke down. And this time I went there, and I was just like, uh, uh, yeah, just this one broke down. Can you sell me another one as well? And he was just like, why? I was just, please, just, uh, and actually, the, the, the person at, at Giganti asked me, uh, what do you do with these? And I said, well, we have a big family. And, uh, <laughs> and he was like, how big is your family? I was just like, really big. Uh, it's, uh, it's really big. We have like 15 kids. And um, he said that this is not for industrial use. If you're using this for industrial purposes, we cannot sell these to you. You know, does your, your, your warranty doesn't co cost that. And I was just like, okay, well, just, just, just sell me as many as you can. So I, I just took a credit card and I bought, I think, like four or five of them. And then uh, I would always keep one spare and I would use them very, very carefully because we ended up selling during the first month, uh, we ended up selling something like, uh, I don't know, like, 15,000 euros worth of uh, smoothies. And when I went over to the, to the store owner, uh, Matti, now you guys don't know who Matti Himbari is. Matti Himbari is a, he's a very, very well-known Finnish businessman. I didn't know that at, at that time. I actually found out how, how like, well off he is as an entrepreneur like later on. After that one month, I went up to him and I said, listen, Matti, uh, here's everything that we've sold. Here's the amount of money that I've made, and here's the amount of money that you have made. And he just looked at the numbers and he said, have you made this much money with my fruit? And I said, with our fruit? <laughs> I've paid for this shit. And he said, all right, well, this works. Uh, just let's see how it works in six months. So he gave me another six months time to prove my concept. Uh, the first thing that I did when, I went, when we got the the first paycheck from there, I actually went and bought a machine that costed about 3,000 euros. And I remember when I bought that, I, I, just, I just went to myself, I was like, please, please, I need to sell a lot of smoothies for this 3,000 to come back. But actually, what happened is that uh, last year we closed it down uh, because my, my dad was running it after, after a very long time. And, and we, I, I sort of, I, I just don't, didn't have time to do it anymore. And it's not something that we could scale to other stores as well. It was something that we had concepted only for that one place. But the moment that we closed down that operation in total, we had more than 50,000 50, euros worth of uh, equipment in that area 
that we actually sold out, like all these kind of different smoothie machines and stuff like that. So, uh, but the, the thing is that, you know, that's how I started my entrepreneurship. I actually went to the guy and I said, I have an idea. And that's what a lot of times happens in, in, in a, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're in, in a workplace, that's, you, you only have a second or a minute to prove to another person that they should invest in your idea. Now, one thing that Matti actually told me later, uh, just when we, we were just like closing the whole operation down, uh, he, to he came up to me and he took me on his boat because he wanted to show me how uh, his new big boat. And uh, we, we went out, we went out to the, we went actually, me and him went to Estonia uh, because that's, he can do that. He just called me up in the morning, he said, Ali, come. And I said, uh, I can't. He says, please, you have to come with me. I'm going to Estonia, I need you. And I, we, we went to Estonia together. And on the trip, he just told me, like, listen, uh, we've made a lot of money together. And the only reason why we made that much money is because you came into my room and you didn't panic. You just said your idea. It was very clear. And I thought to myself that if I have to invest in some idea, it's this guy. Because he came into my office and with a, with a stupid idea. Like who adds water and claims that I'm going to make money through water? And I told him, I told him that I didn't have any other answer. I came up with the water. That was in my original solution. I didn't have a concept for you. I came up with everything. While talking, I was you know, coming up with ideas of how to make this smoothie thing work. Uh, at the end of the period when we, when we finished the operation, uh, I think it was last year, um, during the last year of our operation, uh, we made close to 150,000 euros uh, of smoothies. That was our revenue. Uh, we cut down on how much bio waste City Market used to have. City Market, because uh, the Finnish businesses have to pay for the bio waste. It's very, very expensive to throw away bio waste. So we were saving money by actually reusing, not reusing, but not throwing away fruit or vegetables or herbs. So we're actually saving money on many accounts. Now, one thing that I want you guys to, this, this story isn't about how I'm successful, no. There are many people who are way more successful, no. The, the, the idea of the story is that, you know, you only have a few minutes to change your life. You only have maybe a few seconds to change your life. And that person might just walk in from that door right now, and you might not even understand it. But the story that you have, or the idea that you have, or the team that you have, or the plan that you have, just keep it clear in your mind. And, and be able to present it. Don't be afraid. Now, uh, you guys go, and uh, we, we're going to have a little break. Now, one, I'm going to, this is not even, I'm not going to ask you guys. Uh, no smoking whatsoever, because on my time, none of you are going to die. I used to smoke for, I started smoking when I was uh, 11 years old. I quit smoking uh, a year and a half ago. And uh, so no smoking on my time. You can do whatever you want. Just take crack or cocaine or whatever, but <laughs> no cigarettes, alcohol, I don't mind, <laughs> but no cigarettes. Uh, 10 minutes, we'll be back uh, 15 past. It's a good group. Yeah. We're just going to go and through some of the. They had rehearsed and they had all rehearsed, but no one 
said they have. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> we need to learn them how to speak louder. That will come. Yeah, yeah. But that still, will come. When you were in the back, it was actually quite difficult to hear, yeah. even with a microphone. Yeah. Let's see what else, what else, what else was supposed to put on. Do you need anything? No, thank you. I'm actually quite good. Where's the toilet, really? Mm, just over there through that door. Okay, thank you.
Ha? No ollaan hyvin mennä asiat. Mukavia tyyppejä. En mä tiedä. En vaan esiintynyt ikinä. Mistä täältä sai kahvia? Tuossa on termari. Onko sitä? Joo. On töissä.
right, everybody, take your seats. Take your seats and let's start. Okay, did everybody have a break? Did anybody go for a cigarette? No, does anybody even smoke anymore? One person, okay. Is it hard not smoking now? How long have you smoked, my friend? How long? February. From February? Stop, <laughs> just don't. I'm serious, don't, don't. It is the most stupidest thing you can do. Use cocaine or something. It's much better. <laughs> I'm honest, seriously. I mean, it gives you like, you know, it's not, not yeah, it gives you like a different kind of feeling or, or use weed, but don't smoke because nicotine doesn't give you anything. Like use alcohol or something. If you want to get wasted, do something else. What about snooze? Snooze? But, uh, snooze is like even worse. It's awesome. It's not awesome. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> How long have you used snooze? Have you used snooze? Snooze? Five years. Five years already? Oh, fuck. I Just, have you have several holes? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is a true story. My, my boss, my boss, uh, he used to have a snooze. Like, he used to always have a snooze here. And then one day at work, we we're just talking like this, and his tooth fell off like this. <laughs> I'm serious. This, I'm not even kidding. And he was just like, we we're just talking, and his full tooth is just like, click. And he was just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> And the irony was to say he put another snooze because he <laughs> felt so bad about it. So he just took another snooze up there. He was just like, I feel so shit. I need to snooze. So stop smoking and snooze. Just, just be, you know, I don't know. I, I smoke. I smoke for, when, uh, for almost 25 years. That's a long time to smoke. Uh, but I just, I, I, the one day, I just quit. I woke up in the morning and uh, I just didn't want to smoke anymore. No nicotine, no snooze, nothing. Just, just, I quit. I didn't gain any weight. I was fat already. <laughs> so I'm, I'm still the same size. Nothing has happened. And uh, yeah, I still can perform. Because uh, why I talk about this uh, smoking thing is that because for me it was a ritual. I do about 300 shows every year. So I perform a lot. Uh, well, this year not so much because we have a newborn baby, and I, I don't want to work so much this year. But next year, for example, I, I already have over 250, uh, you know, events in my calendar where I have to perform. And uh, for me, big part of performing was cigarettes. It was cigarettes. It was having a cigarette before I go on stage because I was so nervous uh, that I felt that I can't do it without a cigarette. How many of you guys are natural, how many of you guys feel that you can naturally perform? How many? Like who are like natural performers? A few people, what, you, you wanted to sh raise your hand but you didn't, all right, but do you feel like, do you feel comfortable on stage? Yes. Yeah, but, but before you go on stage, are you just like, eh, you fuck, you know, be? or do you feel, or do you feel like, oh my God, or, or, or is it like, oh my God, I can't, I have to go and do this? Which one is it? Are you a bit anxious when you go on stage? Uh, a bit. A bit. All right. Well, that's good. See, for me, and I perform almost on a daily basis. And still, if I know that I have to perform, uh, it just ruins my day. It literally ruins my day because I can't stop thinking about all the things that can go wrong. Now, I'm going to give you guys an assignment. Uh, and I want you to think by yourself, you know, just, I've, uh, I've put a dead timeline of five minutes here, but we're not going to use five minutes, that's because after, after a couple of minutes, you guys are probably not going to, you, you guys are going to do other stuff. So we're just going to have a couple of minutes, but the, the assignment is this. 
Why, why do so many people fail at performing or at presenting? Why do so many people? Now, I want you to write a list for yourself. What are the reasons why so, do you guys even know how to write anymore, or do you need a laptop for it? <laughs> you know, good. You can, wh wherever platform you use, just, just, just use that one. Uh, and uh, so just a couple of minutes, just quiet silence, and, and think to yourselves and write down why so many fail. This says why so many fail at pitching an idea. But the, uh, the, the idea is just like, you know, why so many people fail at presenting anything? All right, your time is up. So, what kind of answers do you have? Why do so many people fail at presenting anything? Why? They don't practice enough. They don't practice enough. All right, how many people had they don't practice enough? All right, uh, now, okay, all right, you? Uh, people are afraid to give like 100% of themselves. People are afraid to give 100% of themselves. How many people have that? People are afraid to give, okay, all right. So, uh, okay, next. Uh, like they try to impersonate someone they're not. They try to impersonate someone they're not, okay, very good. So they're, they're, they're afraid to be themselves, yeah. All right, next. Yeah. They practice too much so the scene just like flows naturally. All right, so they don't practice enough and they practice too much. <laughs> all right, very good, okay, contradicting. But how many people had that? All right, so uh, another one, okay, yeah. 
They can turn their ideas into words. Very good. That's a very that's one thing that I, for example, many times I have a problem with. I have an idea, but I can't make it into like a solid sentence. Yeah. Uh, how many people had that one? Oh, another few. Okay. Well, what about you? They underestimate the complexity of their idea. Very good. So they over, uh, so, so they, so they uh, what's it called? Uh, they don't simplify it enough. Okay, so they don't simplify it enough. Uh, how many people had that one? Very good. Okay, uh, another one, yeah? Uh, they, are not prepared they are not prepared to fail. Very good. Now we're getting closer to what I'm trying to find out here. Very good. Uh, how many people had that one? Yeah? All right, next one. Yeah, you? Okay, okay. Uh, what did you write down? What did you write down? Huh? The fear of failure. That is the most important aspect of anyone failing. Did you guys know that the more than death, what we fear? What do we fear more than death? Why do we, why do we, feel present, why do we fear presenting in front of an audience? Why do, why do we fear that? Because people are going to judge you for your ideas. The actual term in Finnish, it has a different, I know the Finnish term, I'm trying to figure out the English one, but it, I think it means the sudden decline of your social status or sudden loss of your social status. We all have a social status here. None of us wants to lose that social status. That is the single biggest fear that we have when presenting anything. And why is that? Why do we fear that? Why is it so hard for us to keep our social status? Why is it so important for us to keep our social status? Like for example, when you guys walked in, none of you touched the chairs. Why none of you, why, why would you rather stand and do like everyone else did? Okay, I know that two people were told not to take the chairs, but the rest of you didn't hear that. You just came in and then you saw the chairs, but you did not react and take a chair until we told you that you are allowed to take a chair. Why didn't you do it? Yeah. It's okay, whoever. Yeah, we try to blend in. We try to fit in. Now tell me, how many people who are really, really successful blend in with other people? How many people? How many, just, just like, like Stephen Jobs? A person who blends in with other people? No. Successful people don't blend in with other people. Successful people actually don't give a fuck about losing their social status. Successful people really are at the edge of always failing in front of an audience. Always. Now I know for many of you guys, this might not be something that you want to do. And I perfectly understand that. I'm not trying to make you uh, who, who don't want to present an idea to become a person who presents an idea. No, but this actually does work for you in the long term when you think about it. If you go and you work for somebody else and you work for a big company, how many of you guys want to not to succeed in what you do? How many of you guys are just going like, well, I don't really want to succeed in what I want to do? How many? Hands up. Is there anybody who wants to fail at what they do? Is there anybody who is here who is goes like, well, the first job that I find, I'm going to stay there, and I hope that they don't promote me. <laughs> I hope that I don't have any more responsibilities. All right. So we all want to go forward. And being able to present yourself is a big part of that. Is a big part of that. Now I know that Alto Ilio Pisto, this 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 whole design factory, and and there's a there's a there's a sort of like a a fab or a fashion right now going on that everybody has to be an uh, entrepreneur. We all need to have a startup. We all need to have a startup. Do we all we need to have? Do, do we all need a startup? No. We need a few startups because the rest of us needs a place to work. <laughs> all right. So here's the thing. Don't be afraid. Like. Know that the reason why you're afraid of present, you know, presenting an idea or, or presentation or whatever, just know it's normal. A lot of people, when they come on stage, they think that, that you know, they are the only ones who are anxious, nervous, 
that they are the only ones who feel insecure about themselves. I'm very insecure. Like, the, most of the times when I perform, I, like, right now, in my head, there is a fear. Like, there's somebody just going like, ah, what are you, crazy? They are looking at you. You're going to die. Ali, you're going to die. Your heart is going to stop. You're going to die. You're going to pee in your pants. I'm afraid I'm going to pee in front of you. I know that doesn't make any sense, but I'm afraid to stand in front of you guys. And for a long time, I thought that that fear would go away because I used to smoke. So I used to smoke just before I would go on stage. I used to smoke sometimes even two packs a day. On a day that I had a performance, I would buy a pack in the morning, and just an hour before the show, I would buy another pack of cigarettes, and just after the show, I would no longer have, a, have any cigarettes left. I would smoke 40 cigarettes in a matter of 16, 17 hours. Crazy. And I thought that if I quit smoking, I would never be able to perform again. But yet, here I am. Nothing has happened to me. I haven't smoked in a year and a half, and I'm still alive. My shows are even much better than before. Because nowadays, when I have a performance that lasts, for example, a, an hour and a half, I don't have to have a break in between just to, you know, have a breath. Because I used to, when I used to have like a show or a solo show for, uh, in stand up comedy for, let's say, like a, a, an hour and a half, I would have to stop at four, 45 minutes, go in the back, and breathe because I didn't have enough oxygen in my body left. I would have to go there and go like, <sighs> And after 45 minutes, you know, uh, then, you know, a 15 minute, 20 minute break, I would come back and I would start again. And then when, that was, and when the show was ending, I would have to stop it mainly because I couldn't breathe anymore. And I thought that this is anxiety. No, it was just something that I told myself. I taught myself that in order for me to, to perform, I need to smoke. And then I started to decompose most of the, you know, things that I had taught myself. Well, one of them was smoking. Now I don't have smoking anymore. What do I do next? I still need to perform because that's where the money comes from. I can't smoke anymore. 13 days into me quitting, quit smoking, uh, I had to do my first live performance on TV, Finnish national TV. I had to host a... Uh, award gala called Venla Gala, which is uh, basically the, well, it's, a, it's, like, it's like the Oscars of Finland. And I had to do that one. And I hadn't smoked in 13 days. And I had told myself that probably that is the day I'm going to smoke. But, turns out, I didn't even think about smoking. Because everything that I had taught myself about why I needed a cigarette to perform was a lie. Now, we all have similar processes where we go through just before we, go, we come on stage. Now, I'm going to show you guys a, cert, uh, a certain technique. Do you see where the light hits the stage right now? Can you sort of like, if I come from here, well, this, if, can, you, can you turn these lights off? Can you turn everything else off except for these? It's going to take a while, but it's OK. We don't need to. All right, good. All right. So do you see where the, where the light hits the stage right now, all right? This is what I call, uh, this, is, this is in my mind, this is my, this is the area where I need to go and get frustrated and anxious. So before any presentation, when I'm in the dark, I no longer, I'm no longer afraid. I just don't get afraid anymore because I've practiced enough. But the, because I know the moment that I step into the light is the time that I need to start worrying about everything else. You understand what I mean? So now you guys can put the lights back on. So when you think about any time you want to present, any time you have to perform, 
just have these like little techniques that help you to get into that mood. How many of you guys know Anthony Robbins? Do you guys know Anthony Robbins? Tony Robbins? A few people know it. He's a motivational speaker. He's probably one of the first motivational speakers to actually make, you know, that, that whole big thing. He made, he has these like huge events uh, in different cities. Like he's a superstar, but he's a motivational speaker. Now, one thing that I've learned from his methods is in a heartbeat. Now, that's very, very important if you need to perform that you understand how your body, how your mentality works. Now, first of all, just remember, we are all afraid. I am more terrified than most of you guys are right now. Because I am in front of you. My genetics tells me I should not be in front of you. I should be one of you guys because I am not, you know, an alpha male that I should be standing and sitting in, in, in the middle of you guys and just be a bunch of this hurdle. But then my instinct says, no, no, no. But, but you know, my, my, what's it called? My, my compassion or, or what I'm trying to achieve in my life, my goals, they tell me, no, you need to stand here and you need to be in your utmost uncomfortable area where you can be. But Anthony Robbins is a very good and a clear lesson. It just says, in a heartbeat. Now that's really, really important in business. How many of you guys have actually, how many of you guys do you have, how many of you guys have a job right now? And I'm not, and what a job, I mean something that is actually related to what you study. A few people, good. All right, and what do you do? I'm a user designer. You, you are what? User You're a user experience designer. Very good, very good. And uh, how long have you been doing it? Uh, one year. All right. Is this your first, uh, like, you know, study-related job? Do you feel uncomfortable doing it? No. no? Like the first day you went to work, was it really, really easy? Uh, for the first day. The first month, was it easy? No. But it no. The, for the, the first four months, was it easy? No. no. <laughs> See what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be you presenting anything. It just, it just has to be with you starting something new. But in a heartbeat, it's very good. Remember this, we don't have much time. Actually, our time is gonna run out in, in 50 minutes. I don't have all the time that I wanted to share with you guys. But take a few notes. In a heartbeat, in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. Remember this, you can change what you feel in a heartbeat. It's very important that you remember this because that's what I do. That's when I walk into the light. That's when I change my mentality or my feelings in a heartbeat. I am no longer afraid. I am courageous. That's what you can do. As long as you are not faced with immediate uh, you know, danger, you can change your emotions in a, in a second. How many of you guys have had a huge fight with somebody and then answered the phone to your best friend or to your mother and just totally ignored the fact that you just had a fight with another person. How many of you guys have done that? Like, you know, yeah, a few. Or had had like a huge, disappointing uh, news and then had to smile to the next person that comes and then you just went like, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> life is. <laughs> How many of you guys have felt this? Good. So what I'm telling you guys, it's not rocket science. You've already have done it before. Now you just have to implement it in a brand new, you know, uh, situation, a scenario. And that scenario might be the fact that you have to come here and present your idea to me or to your, to your teacher. But in, in a, like a longer period, I, who is the oldest person here? Who is above 30? Okay, a few people. Who is, okay, and... Uh, who is like, who is below 20? No one, okay. Well, here's the thing. When we are like, I've been where you're sitting right now, you know, and I thought that, yes, I'm learning everything now. And you know, I have a, well, who, who is from the business school of Helsinki, Helsinki Business School, all right? Remember when you got in, you kind of felt like, okay, well, this is it. I've made it, I'm gonna be rich, I don't have to work anymore. <laughs> Remember that feeling? 
You remember? And then when the call you thing came, I don't know if it's call you anymore because it's been like, fuck, it's been 15 years. Oh, sh it's been even longer. Oh my God, it's always, <laughs> it's almost been 20 years since I was admitted into, holy fuck, I am old. <laughs> I am so old. But you remember that feeling when you got the, the letter and you were just like, yeah. I've been in that situation where I thought that, you know, this university is going to solve all my problems and I don't have to, you know. But to be honest, I got my master's degree and I'm still waiting for someone who needs, a, you know, a, a CEO. <laughs> because that's what my degree is for. <laughs> I'm still waiting for somebody to call me and say, hey, come, we need a CEO. <laughs> that call has not come yet. Because you know, most of the things that you guys learn here, it's, it's good, you know, of course you learn like to take, like the, you, you learn a lot of things, but the actual set of skills that you need in a workplace are more social. They're not really, you know, technical or, or you know, uh, they're not tech oriented or, you know, I mean, if you, if, for example, if you don't know how to solve a problem, nobody's gonna fire you because you didn't know it, no, but you're gonna find another team and you're gonna be part of that team that's gonna solve it. But if you're a dickhead, they will fire you. <laughs> or if you don't know how to be in a social situation with other people, they will fire. Or you will not go for you know, you will not go forward in your career. So in a heartbeat is a very, very good uh, and a practical tool. When you realize that you are uncomfortable and uh, and you realize that now you need to put all your potential into one basket, and this is your moment where you need to shine. That's when, in a heartbeat, is very, very handy. No matter what happens, just before you have to go and enter into that situation, just do this, in a heartbeat, and go from sad to happy. Because the most powerful people who perform are not the ones who are not afraid, and they're not the ones who who are the most courageous. No, they are the ones who can share their feelings with you. I can transfer my fear or I can transfer my inspiration into you. If I can do that, then you will listen to me. Or if you do that, I will listen to you. And a very good tool for that, um, what I have learned, actually this is a, let me just hold, whoa, whoa, here. This is a very, very, like, it's, a, it's a quote by John Wooden. Uh, he's a basketball coach. A uh, legendary basketball coach, and uh, it says, "Be quick, but do not hurry." What the what what does that even mean? Can anybody just tell me what that what that means? Be quick, but don't hurry. Anyone? Just say something. Yeah. Like don't try to rush your rush your stuff or fast. Yeah, don't try to rush your stuff. Yeah. Well, Yeah. And I guess it's kind of like know your goals, but at the same time just live in the moment. Yeah. You can just take this as much as you want. For me, yeah. You, you, would you like to add something? Yeah. I would think it's like the mindset. Like you're still moving fast, but yeah. you're not putting the negative connotations of being fast. Yeah. In, I used to play basketball, all right? And John Wooden used to be like somebody, I was just like, I hope that if, if I, like John Wooden is a legendary uh, basketball coach. And be quick, but don't hurry, basically was, it was this, that you need to be really, really fast, you know, but as a team, be fast. So be quick, because being quick is different than being in a hurry. Because when you're in a hurry, you will always make mistakes. But if you're quick, you're just fast. Like, what's it called? Uh, the fastest people on the world. They're not, they're not in a hurry. They're just fast. Like Usain Bolt. 
he's not in a hurry. He's just fast, you know. He doesn't, he doesn't run because he needs to get to somewhere. So this is, this is like a mindset for me when I go through, for example, an entire set of, let's say, two-hour stand-up comedy. I just go, all right, I have a list of things that I need to talk about. I have two hours time. And then, but when I step on stage, I realize that everything just wants to come out at once. Like right now, when you guys were on stage, you only had three minutes. How many of you guys actually concentrated more on getting your idea set in three minutes instead of just simplifying it? How many of you guys focused more on the, on the time instead of the idea? Just raise your hands. Everybody just raise your hand. <laughs> just raise it, because I know that's what happened. I could tell from the way you were presenting your idea is that most of you guys were so obsessed with, are we going to make this in three minutes, that you forgot that that's not the point. You guys did very well. I'm not saying you guys didn't do well. But I can always tell that you guys we're focusing on the time. Because simplification is very important in any of your ideas. Now, who had the message? Who, who, who received the message while on stage? Who was that person? Was that planned? That was very well timed. I don't know how you guys managed to do that, but that was very well timed. How many of you guys realized that she actually received the message? How many of you guys heard the beep? A few people. That was very, very nice. A little small touch, but I was impressed. I was very impressed by that. I don't know why that, was, that sort of just came out. I was just like, well, that's, that's very, I, I want to do that. <laughs> I want to have somebody sending me a text message if, if I wanted to. All right, now, um, <clears throat> before we go any further, I have another assignment for you guys. It's quite similar to what we just did. But here's the assignment, another assignment, all right? Now, do the exact same thing, but this time, just tell me, what is a good presenter made of? What is a good presenter made of? Or a good presentation? He's trying to say a little more. And I think... Mm -hmm. Be 
pino, pino, ha. Äiti rakas sai mut rakastamaan, nyt ei lakasta maat, vaan mitä pakasta saa, niin nostetaan ja käännetään ylös kuva puoli. Otan tuoli, hengitään syvää ja tote ei oo huoli. All right. Time's up. All right, so what did you guys write? Yep. Uh, I had that the first thing was interest or excited about this material. I very good. Interested or exciting about your material or, or yeah, that's very, very good. Now, any presenter that, it, or, here's the thing, all right? Now, how do you know if somebody is very excited about their own stuff? How do you know that? They usually know it as well and they want to tell about yeah. it. They want to tell about it, but here's the thing, all right? Now, this is an actual thing, all right? Now, I'm, I was, I'm, actually, I'm excited when I perform for you guys, right? I don't have to pr prove that, that I'm excited, all right? Now, here's, the, here's another way I could have done that. Yes, well, uh, this is a good presenter. And uh, yes, and uh, uh. so a big part of actually being very excited about what you say is the way that you use your voice. Use your voice, you know. There's nothing worse than being at a place where a presenter is afraid so much that they actually, you know, forget how to talk. You know, because when you, when you look at people and, and think about it in a different way, if you are afraid to use your voice, you are actually making it hard for people to listen to you and then you end up being there for longer because they have to ask more questions from you. So don't be quiet. Don't be quiet. Use your voice. Now, a lot of you guys, when you were here, of course, now I'm not going to say because most of you guys are not used to using a microphone, so it's a totally different game. But if somebody gives you a microphone, speak into that microphone. This is a, just a simple technique. <laughs> just speak into it. Practice. Practice using a microphone. Now, this is a true story I'm going to tell you guys. Uh, when I was 23 years old, uh, I was working in a trainer's house. And uh, we were supposed to present an idea uh, to the highest uh, executives of UPM Kymmene. Do you guys know UPM Kymmene? It's one of the biggest companies in Finland. They make basically what they, at that time, they used to make uh, mainly paper and uh, machinery for making paper. So it was a very, very big company. And I was 23 years old, and my boss, told me that I had to present the idea that we had because it was so tech-oriented that he couldn't do it. He just couldn't do it. He didn't understand the technology behind what we were trying to do. And I had to do it. I'm 23 years old. I had never, ever been in front of any executive in my life. But I stood in front of those people, and I started talking. Now, the only thing that I had to practice the day before was how to say miliardi. In Finnish, it means a billion. I had to learn how to say miliardi. I had never said miliardi in my life. And why did I need to make that sure? Because the idea that we're trying to sell these people was basically the fact that we could make a miliardi lisa raha, a billion, you know, a billion euros more money. Now imagine 23 years old, standing in front of an executive group of the biggest company in Finland and saying, we can make you a milliard. <laughs> <laughs> I had to practice saying that word, milliard. And I remember on that time when I, when I said, and this is what I actually said, that they, that they were sitting there and they were like old men. They were seriously, they were like old men, like, you know, old, like, here's the thing. You, have you guys watched Mad Men? Like, they used to work with, like, that kind of a marketing agency. Like, they still wanted, like, women to do their coffee and stuff. Like, that's how old they were. And I'm standing there, 23 years old, in front of them. And I was supposed to say, Metahatele, miliardi lisaraha. And guess what? They didn't buy the thing from us. They didn't. 
Why? Because it was way too, pa it was way too ahead of what we were trying to tell them. Like right now, most of the things that we were trying to sell them back then, you know, this is what, 2000 and, I think it was 2005, 2006? Like back in the days, back in that time, when we were talking about like, you know, how we're gonna be able to use social media in order to, you know, help them uh, govern their entire community of people, they didn't understand anything we were talking about. Like these men were just going like, how is this gonna help us? It's not gonna help us. But nowadays, of course, they have the exact same ideas that we were trying to implement then. Now they have their, their companies. But it's a totally different time. But here's the thing. You have to practice, not your speech, just practice what you need to make the other people understand. You know, practice, not your, don't practice the idea. Here's the thing. A lot of people make the mistake of trying to sell the idea. Let me see. Ugh. No. Where is it? Oh, no. Here. <coughs> uh, no, not this one. <laughs> not this one. Not this one. Sell your team. Yeah. No. I cannot believe I am so bad at this technology. What's, all right, well, apparently I have, uh, I don't have it anymore. No? It's okay. Uh, it's all right. So what you need to practice sometimes, it's not, it's, it's, it, it might be something very, very small. Now, one good thing that uh, Yari Saras ever taught me was the fact that uh, you can't prepare for everything that's going to happen. You just can't. But be sure that you are ready to answer any question that comes in. And just rely on the fact that all the answers are within that space and time. Now this is something very important. This has actually helped me a lot. Now I'm going to open this, what, I'm, what I mean by this. When I say that all the answers are within that space and within that time, when I did this uh, presentation for you guys, all right, I was trying to go through everything, all the scenarios that might happen today. All the scenarios. Now am I able to do that? Am I able to understand everything that's going to happen? I'm not going to be predicting, I'm not, I can't predict the future. So stop predicting the future. And just rely on the fact that, hey, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And when I step into that room, I'm going to make sure that anyone who asks me a question, at least I have an answer for them. And don't worry about, sometimes, you know, you know when we try to make sure that people love our idea so much that we forget that, you know, they don't really invest in the idea. No investor has ever invested in an idea. Do you guys understand the irony in that? If you go to Slush and you talk with any angel investor, they will always tell you the same. No one has ever invested in an idea. You want to know why? Because the idea will always change. Why can't I find these fucking things? I can't believe this. Where is it? Where are you? Why doesn't this work? I can't, I'm gonna. All right, now let's uh, see. Oh. Please. Was it where? Hey! Where was it? It's here. Yeah, so your idea will never, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Stop selling your idea. No one really cares about your original idea. Did you guys know that Uber is not the idea that it was originally was? Did you guys know that? That Uber is no longer the idea that originally was. Facebook is no longer the idea that it originally was. Airbnb is no longer the idea that it originally was. None of the ideas are still the same. So stop selling your idea. Sell your team, sell your plan. 
And make sure that you always have, you know, some sort of money behind it. People who, care, who, people who actually decide for your future, for my future, they don't care about the value. They care about money. I'm sorry to break that green bubble, but they don't really care about refugees. They care about can they make money off refugees. They don't care about, you know, plastic in the ocean. They care about making money off the plastic in the ocean. Did you guys uh, follow on the Colin Kaepernick thing, Nike ad? What do you guys think about that? Was that a value thing, or was that a business plan? Yeah. Yeah, the sales, the sales went up by 30%. Online sales, 30% within 24 hours. That is huge. No one can do that. And everybody was just like, Nike is our thing. Nike is the best thing that ever happened to the liberal world. And which sports brand is the biggest sponsor of conservative values? Nike. They pour more money into conservative values than they do into Colin Kaepernick. So companies don't care. Your bosses are not going to care about the environment. They're not going to care about your values. They don't give a fuck. What they care about is money. Can you make money off them? Yeah. If you can make money, you can change the world. That's what Elon Musk does. He can make money, he can change the world. You think, if, you think if poor people can come up with a Tesla? No. So if you have money, if you can make money for them, always. So always have a business plan with like, a, with, with like numbers in it, always. This is my idea. This is how much money we're going to make. This is how much money you're going to make off of my idea. Can we do this? Yeah. Thank you so much. Here's a check. Sign it. And go and take your check and change the world. Sell your idea and sell your money. Sell how you're going to make money. You are nothing but a money-making machine for a lot of companies. Remember that. Unless you become like a big, like an Elon Musk, then it's a totally different thing. Then you can change the world by yourself. But not now. You know, so get that a bit naive idea out of your head. Learn how to deal with numbers. Even if you're just a designer, learn how to, if you just focus on design, even if you just focus on design and the only thing you want to do is to design whatever project that you have right now. <laughs> just make sure that you can make money of it. Uh, so. What else, did, uh, what else is a good presenter made of? Yep. Walk the fine line between stupidity and courage. Stupidity and courage. Yeah, walks the fine line between those two. Yeah, very good. Yep. Uh, showing like a personal weakness. Showing a personal weakness. Very, very good. Anything else? Anyone else? Showing a personal weakness. Now, here's something that I want you guys to remember uh, is we all have weaknesses. Use that weakness on stage. Now, what my weakness is that I cannot, I don't know how to prepare for anything. I honestly, I just don't know. Like, this is probably the first time I've ever used the slideshow when I've done, I just don't do it. Or when I do my stand-up comedy routines, I never write anything in advance. Nothing. I always improvise on stage. And it's not because I'm really good at improvising, no. It's just because I'm so shit at writing that I have to use <laughs> the fact that I don't have any material ready. I have to use that on stage. So find out what your weakness is, and then use that weakness into your advantage. If you are really, really afraid of performing, use that, your fear, and turn it into something that you can actually utilize. Do you guys understand what I mean? If you're afraid, how can you, uh, let me just say, so if you're afraid, how can you use that into your advantage? How can you use it? Uh, I don't know, just express the fear, so that means uh, it would be clear, and uh, then maybe I 
I would get like courage from the fact that people know my fear already. David, <laughs> why is this? Oh, this is still okay. Now I get it. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So when I like uh, when I know that people know know that I'm afraid. Yeah. So then it might might be some kind of funny moment. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Just using your fear. How many guys have you? Well. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't do three minutes. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Okay. Now here's the thing. The reason why I told you that I don't do three minutes is because I always negotiate something that is better for me. All right. So if you're not good at presenting your idea in three minutes, negotiate so you can have five minutes. Learn how to negotiate. If you don't know how to uh, stand in front of an audience and tell your story, negotiate for somebody else to do it in, in, instead of you. If you're too afraid to perform, negotiate for another person who's not afraid to do the same thing for you. That's. A key issue in any successful pitching idea. Now, uh, a very, very good friend of mine has started, actually it's not even, uh, has started a startup in Joensu. Uh, it's called Upret. Uh, it's basically, uh, they're, what they're trying to do is, they're trying to, let me just, this is because the, their, their business plan has changed. The original idea was that they're going to be Uber for translators. So you need a translator, you just go to Upret, and then you will find a translator for whatever you, it's, it's, and it's in a matter of 10 seconds, you will find a translator. That was the original idea. It has changed now. But uh, he was supposed to go, and he's horrible at speaking because he doesn't know how to speak English or Finnish. He only knows how to speak Urdu which is really, really hard if you want to start up a startup in Finland without knowing how to speak either of the languages. So what he did is that he actually had people like me pitching the idea for him. So learn how to use that as well. Negotiation is one of the key elements of your success. You want to know why we have a, a gap, you know, a wage gap in Finland? Or in the Nordics, negotiation skills. How many of you guys have actually negotiated your salaries? All right, a few. Why not the rest of you? Because we're too afraid to negotiate. These all come actually together. Now, <laughs> no one, as I said in the beginning, I don't expect any of you guys to become like really, really good you know, presenters. No. I don't expect any of you guys to actually present anything. At least learn how to negotiate. Or if you don't learn how to negotiate, if you don't have enough things to negotiate with, then use some of the techniques that I've showed you. But to answer your original question again, I learned this the hard way. I did three minute stand-ups and I realized it's horrible. I was like, why am I doing this? Three minutes is not enough for me. I need an hour. <laughs> I need four hours. And then through negotiation, I have got what I want. All right, more. I need more. What makes a good presenter a good presenter? <coughs> yep. Clear. It's clear? Yeah. There's an agenda. Very good. Anything else? Yep. Talking for the right audience. Very good. That is a very, very good point that you made. Now, if you, if you think about this, if you, like, okay, let's, let's take an example. Uh, you have an idea, you have a team, you have a plan. Now, you go to Slush and you want to pitch your idea. You know, find the people who will be able to, you know, invest in your dream. Don't just pitch it to anyone. 
talk to the right to the right audience. That's a very very key issue in this. Okay, more. Understand the audience in industry, exactly, yeah. So have your numbers correct. Have your numbers or have whatever it is you're doing, just have them correctly. Just have them, you know. Anything, if, if, when you guys go to work, you guys are gonna have to work on project. You guys are gonna have to sometimes sell that project to your bosses. Have what th the things that they want. All right, what else? Yep. Uh, he, or she he or she doesn't blend in. Yeah, that's true. There's always something different about them. I remember back in the days. I remember I used to hate the fact that Yari Saraswa, my boss, used to walk around with a pencil and then he would drop it and he would continue doing that. Now, how many of you guys want me to pick that up? Hands up. How many of you guys? <laughs> how many of you? He would never pick it up. He would use that as a power tool between the us and him, and we would just go like, what the fuck is he not word? And we would focus on this, and, and he wouldn't do it until somebody would walk up and, and grab it, and then he would just go like, just, you know, I'm not saying you should do it now. <laughs> but that's how he would take that you know, position as a, as a leader. He would drop these, and it was so frustrating. Because those of us who would, we, we used to work for him, we used to know that he would drop, like, during a one hour speech, he might have dropped like four of these. <laughs> like, he would just go like this, like this, and he would just drop them, and it was frustrating. Because we always go, like, what the fuck is it? <laughs> but that's why he was such a good presenter. Uh, what else? Embracing silence, very good. Have pauses. <coughs> very good. Have pauses, very good. All right, what else? If you're honest, hmm? if you're honest, you need to very good, honesty. One thing that a lot of people don't understand is that if you lie, <coughs> if you lie, the audience will understand that you lie. That's why I had this one here. Be honest to yourself. Always be honest to yourself. How many of you guys, uh, how many of you guys, uh, like, you know, don't lie during the day at all? Like, you just don't tell a lie. Really? Like, not a single lie? Not a single, not even to yourself. You don't even lie to yourself. Maybe to myself. Yeah. So you do lie. You just don't lie to other people. You just go like, oh, you know, I don't have to do this. You know, I have time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> ah, you know, Netflix and chill. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. <coughs> Start with yourself. Be honest to yourself. Then you can be honest to your investors. I have put investors here, but of course I understand. In, when I talk about investors, I mean investors, people who will invest in your future, not perhaps in your company, but in your future. It might be your boss. It might be your. It might even be your partner. A person who, like, like you know, a, a person you live with, you know, that could be your investor as well. How many of you guys are totally, 100%, like, honest with your spouses? Do you guys even have spouses? <laughs> Do you guys have a significant other? No. Or are you guys all single? How many of you guys are single? Let's start with honesty. <laughs> Being honest is extremely hard. You know why being honest is so hard? Because you have to tell yourself the truth. I have to tell myself the truth every day about how sometimes I do a show, sometimes people pay me. Actually, people, like companies pay me a lot of money. They pay me, like, for a 20 minute stand up gig, I, they might pay me 100, you know, 1,500 euros for 20 minutes for the making them laugh. And sometimes when I send them the invoice, I just go, like, oh, fuck, but they didn't laugh so much. <laughs> It was a shit gig. So I have to be honest with myself. But then I call them up and I say, listen, uh, I, that was a really bad show. And they go like, oh, well, I'm glad that you agree. <laughs> I'm like, ah, fuck. So 
can I send you an invoice? And they go like, yeah, just send us the invoice. You know, you came, you did what you did, but you weren't that funny. We thought you were going to be more funny. I was like, well, that's life, you know. I thought that your customer service is going to be more <laughs> better as well, but it wasn't. They were really bad. But be honest with yourself. And that is something that I have to practice every day, uh, this part. I try not to lie. Uh, now, this is uh, a personal story, but I, when, I, when my parents moved to Finland in 91, I really didn't have any friends. And the way that I gathered friends around me, Finland, like, like it was just basically by making myself more interesting than I was. So I would tell lies to a lot of people. So most of my childhood friends, they still don't believe anything that I say. They just don't, they honestly don't believe anything that I say. Because they grew up with an Ali who used to lie. Like I used to come home and, and you know, I used to just come from a week, you know, like just like a, after a weekend and it was just like, so where were you? I was just like, I was in Spain. And they were just like, what? What were you doing in Spain? I was practicing my swimming in Spain. I was just like, really? <laughs> no, you weren't. We saw you <laughs> in Aleppo. <laughs> I was like, no, no, that wasn't me. That was my brother. <laughs> you were with your brother. This is a true story. I told a lie that I used to practice in Spain. Like, and, my, and my friend, they don't believe anything that I say. So I have to practice on being honest. I have to practice on being honest with my wife. Not about cheating or anything like that, no. But just about, like my wife might call me and say, what did you do during the day? And then my imagination will just take it and, and just, I will just, just say a lie. Like she might just call me up right now and say, where are you? I just go like, ah, I'm in the airport. <laughs> I don't even know why I lie so much. But I just lie. And that's why being honest to myself is very, very hard. Now, one thing it's about honesty when you, when you think about your future is that, you know, be honest about what you can do. That's why I said be honest. Be honest about what you can do. Because most of the people, you know, they promise too much. They promise way more than they can handle. Pitching an idea or pitching a project or, or, or being successful in the workplace is not about how you know, how big is your idea? It's about how well it's being done. So, you know, if I, you know, if, if, if I work for a company, I remember when, like, you know, one of the main reasons why we couldn't do it with UPM Kymmenen, the Uksi Miljardi Asia, was basically the fact that it was a very, like, you know, we, we were promising too much for that time. <coughs> Don't promise too much. Promise what you can do. Because when you promise something that you can do, you can always over deliver whatever, that you, whatever is it that you are doing. You know, so when, when like people call me up and they say like, Ali, would you like to come and perform for our company? I always go like, you know, I'm not really that funny in, co in corporate events. I'm not really that funny. I don't want to take, like, you know, imagine if your company has like a day off and they ask me to come and perform there, and then I want to talk about the political things that are happening in Finland and, and racism and stuff like that. Nobody wants to hear that when they have a company retreat. They don't want to hear that. So I just tell them, let's say, listen, I'm not really funny in your event. And then they go, just like, well, just come, you know, we'll figure something out. And then I go, and then they laugh a couple of times, and they're like, well, you were more funny than I thought we were. And it's like, well, thank you so much. I'm actually really good at under. <laughs> Estimating myself. But with this being honest, like, don't forget your vision. You know, don't forget to be ambitious about whatever you're doing. Because honesty and, you know, uh, in, in Finnish we have nöyrus, which is uh, humility, yeah? But, but uh, we, we just say, like, you, you have to be humble but a uh, no ristella. But but don't be not too humble. What the f I, I, we don't even have. I don't even know if there's a term in English for it. Allow no or no ramut ala no ristella. Be humble, but don't be too humble. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Okay. But anyways, so we're going to towards a f few few last things that we have now. Uh, the, best fail, the best fail the most, have you guys heard this? Don't be afraid to fail. Uh, I have failed, I think I've, I've, ran, I've, I've, I've been 
in companies that have been bankrupt like several times. It's okay. Don't be afraid to fail. Especially failing your business is not a bad thing. You will learn a lot from that. Now, for the last 10 minutes, I want you guys to really, really uh, focus on one thing, and that's yourself. Eikö meillä ole vielä 10 minuuttia aikaa? Mik? Onko meillä vielä 10 minuuttia aikaa? About, yeah, okay. So for the, for the last 10 minutes, I want you guys to f uh, focus on one thing, and that's, and that's yourself. Now, before I, before I give you the assignment, uh, you will not become a good presenter unless you practice. So you have to do this more often, all right? Now, there are a few places where you can do this. One place where you can learn how to become a better uh, public speaker is Toastmasters. Do you guys know Toastmasters, all right? If you don't know it, it's a, it's a public or it's, a, it's an organization that helps people uh, become better public speakers. Follow them on social media or go to their events. Uh, and it's a very good community. I'm not part of them, but it's a good community for a lot of people who want to practice this. You will have a platform where to do it. Second thing is that, you know, just watch YouTube. Just watch who is, who is a good public speaker. TED Talk is a very good example. Watch them. See what they do. And replicate the exact thing what they do. If you see a good TED Talk, just practice the same talk, the exact same one. Just have like a public karaoke, like a speech karaoke with yourself. Do it. Because it's really, really helpful. And as I said, it's not about making money. It's about going forward in your life. It's about taking a better step and going forward. Now, for the last 10 minutes, I want you guys to, this is really, really important. Because in order for you to become a good public speaker, you need to be able to answer three questions. And those are, why am I not better? What I should do to become better? And what am I willing to do to become better? So three questions. Now, answer those and write them down and make a commitment to yourself. What is it that I am going to do to become a better public speaker? <coughs> Just have time, you have time, don't worry about it. Oh, the questions. Why am I not a better public speaker? What should I do to become a better public speaker? What am I willing to do to become a better public speaker? So why am I not good at this? What should I do to become better? And third, what am I willing to do? It's very, it's very important to answer the third one because the third one is the commitment. What am I willing to commit to? Because if you're not willing to commit to any of the things that you've managed to say you're going to change, nothing is going to change. You need to commit to something in order for change to happen. Never I spill out my 
my work on the canvas. Andre's always the first to acknowledge the bigger picture, nigga, regardless. Of the past trauma, we passed that. Flashbacks that the past have a good laugh. My half and your half. Good math, put it all together. Now cash that. Peace goes out to easy RA. Relatives like this, cause we family. Secret baby, huh? We'll never part ways. To the girls hating me for the hard days. I made my peace. Sorry for the blase. Blah. Sorry that I could have stayed. I tried. Exit on the left hand side. Bye. My oh my God. Are you guys done? Who still needs time? There's anyone any time? All right. Uh, any questions? Just a couple of minutes. Any questions before I let you guys go? No questions? Well, I'm so good. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, how long did you train for this lecture? Oh, for this lecture? Yeah, um, we had a meeting with Mika. I think it uh, was it Mika. What was it? A month ago? Yeah, we had, a, we had a meeting a month ago, and then uh, yesterday I, I kind of went in panic. I thought that I need some, I need a slideshow. So I did a slideshow. <laughs> but uh, I did have like a, like a list, or like a, how do you, how do you say it? Like a, a way that I'm gonna go through this. So I knew that this is the things that I'm gonna do in the beginning, this is the things that I'm gonna do in the, in the uh, in the middle, and these are the things that I'm going to end with. But I didn't have all the things written down or written anywhere. So basically, you guys can come and check my entire, like, here are the few post-its that I had of how I'm going to run this through. Anything else? Just feel free to ask. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. What 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 uh, what was I pitching for? Oh, uh -huh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I can tell you guys like a, a concrete example of that. Uh, well, for example, I don't know. Well, the the Finns might have heard of a movie that we made. It's called the uh, the Refugee Unknown. It was uh, in 2015, I made a movie, uh, a documentary about the refugees coming to Europe. We, me and my friend Hami, we went to uh, the, the, the island of Lesbos, where, where the refugees were actually coming into Europe at that time. And we traveled with them from that point all the way back to Finland. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, we won a couple of uh, awards with it. Uh, for example, Tampere film uh, the, the film festival in Tampere, Tampere, they awarded us as one of the best documentaries of the year. Uh, for example, that one was basically the same. Uh, I came up with the idea in August of 2015 when I realized that my entire social media is filled with uh, with refugees. Is entire it's it's both like you know people were fighting over whether refugees are good or bad, and I kind of felt very frustrated by the whole idea. So what I did is that. Uh, I told my idea to uh, Aram Aflatuni, which was uh, the CEO of ITV Finland. And me and Aram, we had the original team. And then we went to Ule, Ule's radio, and we pitched the idea, said we want to do this documentary. And what they did is just like, well, you know, we believe in Ali, we believe in you, Aram, but we still need a director. 
So we needed to find a third person for our team. And that's when we started like focusing on, on the team, which was we got a very, very good uh, director, which, uh, which is my friend Hami. And then we still needed more people for Ule to actually give us the amount of money that we needed. And then after we had the team, we came up with the plan of how we're going to do it. And that's what we sold to Ule. And that's how we got uh, the enough funding to actually make the movie. Yeah. 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 Whenever I, uh, here's a, it's a actually a very relevant uh, question that you asked. Uh, when I start to plan, I, I, every year I have a new show. Uh, and that show is about an hour, hour and a half, depending on how much material I can come up with. But every year I, uh, on, uh, I'm sorry, December 6th, which is the Finnish Independence Day, uh, I have, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a point for me in a year because that's, that's the day that I renew all my material. So everything that I've done this year, uh, I will film at Savoy Theatre on the 5th of December, and then on the 6th, I have no longer any material left, so I have to come up with new material. Uh, I will spend basically most of the time building my new material, but just going through what I want people to feel. Uh, for example, last year, uh, my, what I, the, 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 biggest feel, the, the biggest feeling that I wanted the audience to have with my show was that I wanted to feel, I wanted, to fe I wanted them to feel uh, relieved. Because uh, the, the year before that, uh, which, uh, well, this is, you guys have to know what I do before I can, but in, in, in a nutshell, every year I have a theme. The year before that, 2016, was basically an aftermath of the, of the refugees. So people were, so what I wanted them to feel was, I wanted them to feel uh, how it feels to be afraid of not being accepted as who you are, of not being in a society or in a group where, where so, that, so that's what I wanted them to feel. So I always go and I always try to plan ahead of how I want my audience to feel before, they, before I actually do anything else. So for example, this year, uh, what I want my audience to feel is that I want my audience to feel uh, as we are one united group. I want them to be able to feel and that they, they can laugh with me, not at me. And that's why the, the name of my show this year is Naura Munkansa, which means that laugh with me, uh, which, is, which is basically, it's, it's a transition from what happened last year. Because last year it was mainly, because it was like, you know, this really happened. That was, last year it was, this really happened. Uh, that was the name of the show. And it was basically true stories of my life, of how I've been excluded of everything, of how I've found myself, you know, and how inclusiveness has helped me uh, to find my way back into society. And this year is about Naura Munkansa, which is Laugh With Me, which is about I want the audience to feel like we are one, and I want us to laugh together. So when you think about what you need to pitch, when you think about your idea, when you, th you think about your plan, when you think about the time, uh, make sure that, you know, don't overanalyze everything. Trust in yourself. What happens on stage is you. They will invest in you. No one will kill you if you go over the three minutes or the five minutes. I have never been in a pitching situation where the investor goes just like, well, your three minutes is over. What they're more interested is in, is your, is your idea clear? Is it simple? And have you presented it in a way that makes, you know, that makes sense for them to put money on top of it and make it into a bigger thing? 
So when you plan, don't over plan. Just think about, okay, this is my idea. This is my idea. Now, from this idea, what is it that is going to be so different from everybody else that I need to make this, I need to tell about this. Now, when you have that, then just goes like, so I have three minutes. How can I make this into a simple version so that people understand? And then just state that. And don't worry. Don't worry. See, no one has ever died pitching an idea. No one. No one has ever been shot. No one's life has been ruined because they fucked up a pitch idea. And no one's life has ever changed dramatically. Yes, they might get investors, but they still need to work a lot. Yeah. 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 Okay, all right, um, here's, all right, this is, um, whenever I have a problem, this is something that I think about. Um, all right, now, everyone over there, everyone grab a piece of paper, grab a piece of paper, and then just mush that piece of paper like this, mush it, I, or whatever, just put it into a ball like this. If you don't have any piece of paper, here's a couple of pieces of papers. Come and grab them here. Come. We don't have time. If you have to go to your next class, go. Just put that into a little ball and keep it in your hand. Yeah, here. Who else needs more paper? Who needs paper? Come and grab your paper. Everybody needs to have a paper. And just put it into a ball. Now, there are no concrete tools for what you can do and what you cannot do. Now, here's the most important lesson that you have to understand is that there are no rules of what you cannot do. Don't think about what you can do. Think about what you cannot do. There are no rules of what you cannot do. If you have six minutes time, if you have seven minutes, whatever, there are no rules of what you cannot do. So don't confine yourself in a space where you have to think about, oh, wh wh what are we going to do? What are we going to just, just, just do something. Just do something. Because, see, here's the thing. I understand that you want a concrete answer to how you are going to pitch an idea. I know that everyone in here in this room wants to have a concrete answer. Now, here's the thing. There are no absolute answers. I cannot tell you that this actually works. But what I can tell you is, when you walk in through that, door, through that door, take a look around, see what you can do, and go with that. Now why I say this is because this is, some of you guys might have heard about this exercise. All right? This is something that really changed the way that I think about uh, what I can do with any group. All right? Now, uh, some of you guys talked about gender equality. Some of you guys talked about equality. Uh, there were a lot of social issues here. We talk about uh, many of these social issues right now, right? Now, this exercise that we're going to do, this was done. This is not by me. This is actually off the internet. Yeah? This is off the internet. Uh, you can find this. But here's the, the story behind it. We are all a class of students right now, all right? Now, here's a basket. Do you have your ball? All right. Now. Here's the thing. Anyone from the place that you're sitting right now, if you can put your, if you can put your ball in, inside of this here, you will get an A. 